Hey, what's going on, guys and gals, and welcome to Age of Wonders 3. This game will be available on March 31st, 2014. It is a turn-based strategy game made by Triumph Studios, and it is the fourth title in the franchise, despite the fact that that says three. They snuck one in between two and this one, just saying. I've played them all, dating back to 1999, so they have a, uh, a very lovely um, history Triumph Studios with Age of Wonders, and this one I can tell you right now, based on the few hours that I've spent so far, is the best of them all. I am so stoked for this game. And I want to share with you. And that's what this game is going to be, this video is going to be all about, is just sharing. I'm going to play my current game in progress and um, just show you some of the action and the fun and the excitement and what this game has to offer. It's not going to be a preview. It's not going to be a review. It's not going to be first impressions. It's not going to be a test drive. This is actually a playthrough of my current game. All right, enough chatter. Let's hop in. We have Echo the Explosive Goblin. He is my goblin dreadnought. He's got a pretty tiara, scary yellow eyes, and an amazing set of chompers. He could probably eat an apple through a fence. No, I don't think he's ever tried. He doesn't eat apples. He prefers human flesh, you see. Okay, here we go. So, at the start of the game, you start out with a leader. Now, obviously, this game is already in progress, so I'm not going to show you that. But you start out with a leader, and you have this entire world out here to, uh, to explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. So it's a 4X turn-based strategy game, very much in the vein of, say, Civilization, if you're, if you're accustomed to that game, which is probably one of the most popular um, titles in that genre. Um, however, it is a fantasy-based thing, and there's spells and swords and sorcery and dragons and monsters, and it's awesome. All right, let's play. You're going to see. So here he is, Echo the Explosive Goblin Dreadnought. Dreadnought is a particular type of class, and there are so many options and races and classes to play with. This was one of the pre-made characters, uh, and it's on a random map. So the game does ship with a campaign and all that jazz, but really we have about 20 or 30 minutes of gameplay I want to show you. I can, if you want, I can show you that stuff down the road, but I really just want to show you how this thing plays out for a few turns. All right, right now all the action is uh, obviously stalled because it's my turn, although I am playing on simultaneous turns, so as soon as I hit end turn, everybody goes all at once. And there are three other wizards, or leaders on the map, I should say, um, and, and me as well, and independents that uh, roam around too and cause some troubles. So we're going to get to meet them all, or some of them anyway, in a minute. But right now they've all gone, and I'm still moving my troops. And here, let's take a look at the events that have just happened here along the right side of the screen. And I'm not going to do a tutorial either, guys. I just want to show you. I'll talk about the, the game as we play, and uh, you'll learn some things. But I really just want to get to the, the, the meat and potatoes. All right, <clears throat> so let's take a look at the recent events. This happened at the end of last turn, and we have um Umbaku has grown into a metropolis. I am a goblin leader, and I have goblin troops, so my nation is goblins. And now we're looking at one of my cities. This is, in fact, my throne city, so it's like my capital. It's Umbaku, and you can see it's a goblin metropolis, the number of people that live here, and um, our income level. So we have gold, we have mana for spells, we have research for uh, researching spells and skills and abilities. We have production for producing things, and we have our population income. And this is uh, this is all per turn. And and, and what I, one of the things I love about this game, and I'm going to be stumbling all over myself here talking because I, I just love it, and I just want to hop in, um, is all the information at your fingertips. Lots of pop-ups and uh, information galore. You'll never be wanting for data all right so we have a we have a, a trooper sitting here in inside the city this is a goblin swarm darter look at the information <laughs> and you want to see even more okay click on them check it out you get to see every ability this guy has and what it does goblin cave crawling night vision wetland walking blight protection and a little bit of lore here very sweet okay let's go back to the city we have... Oh, we have no gold. This might be the end of a turn. I think I ended it last night and then just said I'll hit end turn at the beginning of the day. Yeah, that's probably what happened. That's what we're going to do. But uh, just to give you a quick rundown, these are all of the units available in this particular town that I can build. 
It shows you the cost and the time that it takes to build them and so forth. As you can see here, goblins are kind of the tinkerers. They have We have musketeers. We get into some machinery. We have a flame cannon coming pretty, su pretty soon. Engineers, um, so forth and so on. And let's take a look at some of the buildings we can create. We can build here public baths, make people happy. You can see their little green faces. you got to keep people happy. Um, arena, siege, siege workshop is going to be a lot of fun. And that we can get into uh, siege uh, warfare. And over here we can raise city. We have some other options for the city. We can raise it, plunder it, migrate to dwarves. Because I have a dwarven city as well. Um, which we'll, we'll go see in a moment. But let's close that and continue on here. So now I'm just going to go through all my troops here and see who can go. I'm hitting N to go through all my armies. And nobody with the exception of this hero. Oh, that's Echo, in fact. But he's got... See, this is his army right here. It shows you up here. There's Echo, and he's got a few troopers with him. Various kinds of goblins, but they're not all healthy. So I'm going to hold off right now. We're going we're gonna to click on End Turn, and we're going to see what the computer does. And by the way, if you scroll out, look at that map. Isn't that beautiful? Oh. oh, There's a surface world. There's even an underground world. I haven't even found the underground world yet. All right, I'm going to End Turn. Hit yes. And now a new day is done. What? Oh, somebody's attacking us. It's an Eldritch Horror. That does not sound good. Oh, no. This is the toughest fight I've had so far. I've got a few hours into this game. I have never seen anything this difficult. It's a tier 4 monster. E God. Oh, wow. It's ugly. And scary. It's fearsome. Look at all the stuff that this thing has. Oh, no. I think we're going to die. We're going to die. All right. Here's one of the things that this game offers, Age of Wonders. That a game say like Civilization does not, and that is actual tactical combat on a tactical on a tactical map. So here we go. We're going down into the tactical map now, which is a really nice close-up view of our troops, where we get control of what we do. And we can just kind of pan around here a little bit. We've got some control of the map uh, camera. And now, since we're being attacked, we go first, which is very nice. Now. Let's take a look at the screen here quickly, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So right now, this is turn-based as well. So we go first, and then he go. Whatever the devil that thing is. We have 30 casting points available to us. Okay, and then here's all my troops down on this end, and we can move around on this map. And this shows you, when you click on one of the units, it shows you how far you can go. Because you have action points. You can't just run around willy-nilly all day long. You can... Make certain moves, and then then you, then your time is up, and you have to wait till the next round. Oh, this is not Echo. Echo's not here. This is my other stack. We have two heroes. These guys both both joined me, my cause at some point during the game. They came to work for me. We have Faron the Quick, who I just upgraded very recently, and gave him some pretty sweet stuff. Um, what did I give him? I gave him on piercing, because they gain levels. A little RPG stuff going on in here as well. I gave him armor piercing, and he was backstab, and first strike. First strike's great. Okay. But he's got range. So we're going to shoot this thing as many times as we can before it gets to us. It's got 99 health. Very high defense, very high resistance, <laughs> and it can dominate. Oh, we're done for. <laughs> this could be the end. <laughs> it's curtains for us, most likely. But we have Echo, who's on the another part of the map, and Echo... Here's Echo, is my leader. You have one leader who plays on the map, and you control him, of course. And they can cast spells. Your leader can cast spells from anywhere on the map. So we are going to at least attempt to suffocate this thing and do some damage. Although it costs, if the leader's not in the battle, it costs double, double the mana. This is usually seven. It's going to be 14 now. This is the best we can do. And this is pretty early in the game right now, so I don't have a whole heck of a lot. But we're going to zap him from afar with a right click. Yeah, what do you think about that? Hmm? <laughs> Six points of damage. Uh, I don't think he's shaking in his boots. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to button up a little bit. We're going to tighten up, tighten it up. We're going to fall back. We're going to... We don't... Uh, he's going to have cover here when he gets there, so we want to... Yeah, let's fall back and tighten it up a little bit. Try to get a couple of shots in at him. Get behind some cover. Come on, you little gobbles. Get in there. No, we're, we're, we're doomed. We are doomed. I have not seen anything like this before. Um, you can only cast one spell per round. So even though some of these guys can cast spells, these heroes, um, 
well, they have the ability to. They can't right now, and they certainly aren't able to shoot him because he's too far. Because this guy has a, a musket, uh, Mikal, Iron Fist, and uh, my Orc Dreadnought has a uh, musket, and Faron actually has a bow, uh, darts, right. Okay, so my turn is done. I hit end turn, and now this nightmare, Eldritch Horror, gets to move. Here he comes. Oh, listen to the sound. Ooh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I love the effects in this thing. Okay, he's he's slow mover, and that is going to work to our advantage for a short while. Um, he's out of range, I believe. Uh, well, let's hit him with Mikal first. Let's just hit him with a suffocate. It's better than nothing. It's all he can do from where he is. And now he's... Now we're out of casting points, but he's down to 87 points. Hit points, and... Oh. Okay, let's see if we can get a shot in on him. At the very least, we have this musket. And he's slow mover. I think if I go here... We want to stay in the green, because if we stay in the green, we get more actions. And he's out of range. Arg. I think I can get right here without any retaliation. I don't want to get too close. Don't want to get too close. He's still out of range, isn't he? Oh, dang it. Fall back. Fall back. Fall back. We're just going to wait for him to get closer. I can't do anything. Where we are. They all go into defensive mode. Oh, boy. Oh! <laughs> I didn't know he could shoot. I might have done something differently had I known he could shoot. All right, let's shoot him back. Him with a musket. Oh, oh boy, now you got his attention. 74. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. I didn't know he could shoot. I would have taken a shot at him before because now that our units are taking some damage, you can see our goblins down to 12. We've lost a few of our troopers in the squad, which makes us less effective at dealing damage. So... What we're going to have to do... Now, he's got some kind of area of effect. Area effect. So let's spread out a little bit. I didn't know that either. This is the first time I've seen one of these clowns. Oh, no. He's got 100% blight protection. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to die. We're pretty much going to die. Let's shoot some mosquito darts at him. It still does... A, it, it'll do a little physical damage. Not much. But a little bit of physical. That's what this star means. When you look at the attack here, the... Little star is physical damage. The five is a blight damage, so it does both. So he he's down to seventy. Um, oh boy! All right, so we can throw stones at him. <laughs> we can call him names and say nasty things. How's that? Spread out, spread out, you dwarves. I got some dwarves here. Range penalty. Uh, I don't want to block. Okay, well now we're flanking, which is great. Because with flanking, you get extra damage, I believe, and they can't retaliate. So, that's a good thing. Now that he's... So, that's one of the great things about having... Uh, when you're outnumbering the bad guy. Now, we can shoot right over this cover. This will provide cover for our troops, which is great. Um, and we can shoot over without any penalty. Look at that. Straight shot. 21 to 31 damage. I love me some goblin musketeers. Oh, I do indeed. That was fabulous. Oh, these, are, these guys are dead. We have goblin war riders, which can only do melee, melee, whatever you want to call it. All right, <clears throat> dudes, charge. But wait, before you do that, we could get a backstab in on this guy, but... Oof. Darts. Trigger three times darts. I if I attack him, will he retaliate? He's fearsome. Oh, I hate to put my my hero out in the fight right so close, right up against him. Let him eat some of the fodder. If he eats fodder, great. I'm going to shoot. I'm gonna... Oh, no! That's not... <laughs> that isn't what I wanted to do. That is one of my... Um, I shouldn't say complaint because it's not the game's fault. It's my fault for not paying attention. But, yeah, that happens occasionally. You move when you don't want to, and there's no going back. There's no going back. All right. Now, I think we're all done here. So, 
we don't have much. Oh, oh, my goblin. You know what? Get the goblin warg riders in there. They're fodder too. Run right up. Maybe attract his attention. Ho, ho, ho. Why is he retaliating? Down to 15. We're doing all right. If I can pull my hero out of there. I feel much better about this. Everybody's gone. Okay. Well, not much else we can do except... End turn. Oh, we're sad. We're sad that we're being eaten by <laughs> uh, Eldritch Hara. It would, it would probably make me upset as well. Absolutely understood. Now, let's throw some stones. He's down to 17. I think we're going to pull this off. Maybe we'll get something good out of this. Wait, seven, who's 17? Oh, no, he's 17. I don't, oh, he's down to 5. Oh, you're all done. We did it. We did it, mates. We did it. Now I'm going to shoot him with some musket. And... Oh, he can't because it's on a cooldown. Well, these guys can shoot now. Oh, no, but he's in the way. That's a problem. The guys get in the way, and then you can't shoot. But we can go around. Because you have a risk of, of hitting your own troop. I think we're good here. Muskets, do your thing. Now, I'm afraid if he attacks first, because I'd like to give him the the kill to get the experience but I'm afraid of retaliation or a first strike I don't know so oh he gets first strike he always gets first strike kill it kill it yes I forgot that I just gave him first strike nice we did it we only lost one unit and what do we get look at this reward so there's actually two pop-ups here and I unfortunately I can't move them but here's our reward or can I um Okay, here we go. You have completed a quest for the town of Dularm abort the abominations, which we did. I didn't know that was a quest. So that was great. So we killed the abomination. I was actually hunting him down, but he came to me. So perfect. And here is the reward we get. We get that we're absorbing a whole town into my empire. That is awesome. A draconian crusher, free unit, infantry, and some gold. And here is that attack. So those things happen simultaneously. That's why I saw those two things pop up at the same time. No big deal. Oh, <sighs> and that now my turn begins. <laughs> that was that was the computer turn. So let's take a look around here and see what's cooking. Let me show you my map. So I started over here somewhere. This is a random map. Um, so every time it's different, of course. Started with one city. I've taken over a few so far, kind of spreading out. And I've got my drones out here, which are mechanical devices that the goblin dreadnoughts get. And they're out just kind of scouting around. All this kind of faded area is fog of war. So I don't, I can't really, I can see the terrain and I know what the terrain looks like because I've been there once. But because of the fog, it could be, you know, a whole army hiding here and I can't see them until I go back again. So here's my, one of my drones kind of crossing this lake which um, is right around all my cities. So I'd love to own this lake if I can get some, some, uh, some naval units out. But look at that thing. It's a big old octopus. Eey. And we're going to send my drone somewhere where there's a lot of space, a lot of area I haven't seen yet. These drones are fantastic. So a drone is a summoned creature or unit and here's my global spell so there's different types 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 of spells there are global spells which you can cast from you know, anywhere outside of combat and they affect the overworld and for example the summon spy drone costs me six mana per turn but i've got plenty i've got 99 incoming and uh you put them out on the map and they're permanent until they get uh destroyed or p potentially dispelled so that's what i have i've got a few of these out um, I'm not going to cast another one right now. And here's another spell that I just researched called Cleanse the Land. And that will uh, remove blight and other nasty things from the land. Um, <clears throat> so let's just keep going here and maybe we'll get to some spell research stuff. You can build new cities on the map. You, know, you can found new cities. And when that happens, you get this little border around them. And that will, um, that will take advantage of any resources you have around your city. Like this gives mana. This provides mana. Uh, mines provide gold, and then some of these other random places do different things. And this one's this one's being guarded right now. I haven't defeated the guard yet, so I'm not getting the benefit, even though it's in my border. And that's why I put this fort here, 
Because the fort is not a full city. We can't build units here, and it doesn't expand, but it does let us grab the uh, output of these two resources right here. And this one, potentially, when I destroy that guy and uh, take his stuff, but we haven't been able, we're not able to do that yet. Let's move on. Here we have... Oh, this is the, the army that just defeated the horror. So this is uh, the city we just got as a reward for finishing that quest. That is great. A little draconian here. What can we build in a draconian town? Draconian elders. Has a fire attack and a physical attack. Fire bolts. Very nice. And dreadnoughts foundry. Okay. I think what we're going to do is uh, not build anything in there for now because I want to save my money up for a cannon. I will stick the draconian here in this stack to bolster up them a little bit and there they are and oh oh i have a feeling some of the guys here doesn't like draconians because it looks like they might have got sad when he joined in let me see did they now nah, they're just generally sad okay fine oh now they're happy now they oh you know what it was it was on blight they don't like they don't like volcanic goblins particularly don't like volcanic lands so that's why they were all upset no problem. All right. Now, we have uh, this fella down here. This lady just joined us very recently. She is uh, Hingrid the Hardbottom Dwarf Arctruid. She's adorable. Here's one of our... Okay, we're at peace with this guy. So, I'm not sure what I was doing with this one. I think I was exploring. Let's go explore. <laughs> Um, oh, this is somebody's border. I can't go in there unless we have open borders. Oh, boy. Do I trespass and get her all angry? Nah. Not just yet. We're, we're still friendly. All right. I think we're done here. Let's hit enter. Yep. Okay. We have a new quest available. Very nice. We produced a laboratory in Mabaland. The city of Gorg produced a siege workshop. Oh, nice. And the dwelling of Antaras has a quest available. And what are we researching here? Invention. We'll get the next turn. Okay. Let's go see. Yeah, these people... Oh, they have a quest for us. The Fae. Hello. Tell me... <laughs> Just die, fairies. Tell me about the quest, please. A dragon. Oh, yeah. What the heck? We can take on ours. All right. So we have... Uh, this is a medium difficulty quest. Duration of turn. Ten turns. These dragons are engulfing our lands. Sure. Okay. Let's do it. We can slay dragons, and we might get this. Imperial Hand Cannon. Oh, got to get that. All right, let's bring our Dwarf Arc Druid over this way. We've got some cloud over here. We haven't been there yet. Pressing H to go to the next hero. And now we're ready to for this battle. Unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be walls here because I'd like to show you the walls. Go, go ahead and take this watchtower, which gives us a nice wide um, area of view so we can see what's around us in this spot. It removes the fog of war is what I'm trying to say. No, okay, no walls here, unfortunately. Because I'd like to show you a battle with walls. All right, so now we're back down in the tactical combat. And since we're the attacker, the defender gets to go first and move into position. So they basically see you coming, right? And they're, and they're preparing themselves. A nice defense here. Okay, so these are, all, these are all infantry. I don't see any ranged here, so this should be pretty easy. I could have just done auto combat, but <laughs> what's the fun in that? Let's suffocate somebody. So this is Echo. Echo's here, so you can see that this only costs seven because we're in the battle. Let's hit the long, long swordsman. That's got to hurt. And I think we'll just back up a tad. I probably should have moved him back before he cast the spell, but I think yeah, we'll wait for them to come to us. We're going to move back, tighten it up. I know these guys don't have... Oh, he already moved. Don't have any area of effect attacks I have to worry about. So we'll bring them back so they don't get hit this next round. Go. Move pretty fast for heavily armored dudes, that's for sure. It's great sound. It did a really nice job with the sound. Um, 
and the animations, the graphics, really sexy looking game for a turn-based strategy game, which you don't see too often, it's historically anyway. All right, let us, let us, let's just zap somebody, although he's got a musket too. Watch this musket, you want to see a musket. 31 damage, physical. Let's take out the nearest guy. No, let's not, because we can take out the nearest guy with these most likely, so bam. Shoot some icky spit at them. Noxious. Spitty spit. I'm gonna fall back just a little bit, and my goblin blight doctors will shoot. Oh, nice, nice, nice. See, they can get more than one attack, depending on if they move or not. Or some just have more attack. Well, let's just do this. That'll knock their numbers down just a little bit because I'm going to run these guys up and take them down. But we're going to shoot them right here. Make sure we click on the skill. Instead of running up, I want to shoot them. Oh, we have an immolation skill that I added, too, that I researched. So there's a chance to immolate. Ah, I like that. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Okay, now let's move these guys up. They're going to have to go around me if I put them here. But we get to go first. I'm not sure what Overwhelm is, but let's we'll be able to kill a few before they can go. Oh, geez, look at this guy taunting us. He's, he's doing the same thing. Smacking his shield. All right, let's hit and turn. And this guy is burning to death. One of them burned to death anyway. Wow. Did a lot of damage. One Ooh, yes. We defeated that troop. Defensively, and I think we'll give Echo. Yes, we'll give Echo the points here, the experience. But this guy has first strike, so I'm going to get hit. So, I'll tell you what. Just cast a spell. Oh, I should have shown. Oh, darn. He's got this great mace. I should have showed you that. When he whacks things with that mace, they just go flying sometimes. All right. We didn't lose anybody there. And now this, uh, you can see the outline here from this tower. And as long as you own that tower, uh, that does not go away unless somebody else comes and takes it. All right. So now we'll just hang out there for a bit and see if anybody else needs to go. Yes, we have a drone here. Now again, I think I mentioned... We have, what is this? An inn. It creates happiness. There's, there are multiple layers to this map. So this is the surface map. You can see it says right here. Um, I haven't found any cave entrances yet, so I haven't been able to get to the caves. But I know there's a, an underground area. And we have our little piggy pig, who's just scouting around down in the south western area of the maps. I don't know where he came from. He was some kind of a quest reward or something. Just showed up. And was looking for employment. I guess it beats the slaughterhouse. Alright, what should we build over here? We can make... Um, barracks is going to allow crushers and draconian flamers. It's going to unlock two units. I think that's a good idea. It's 100 gold. We got the cash. Let's do it. And I think with that... Let's quit this turn because I want to show you guys research. Yes, a new day has dawned. Invention 2 researched. Slay the giants. Oh, my quest failed. I couldn't get to those guys, they were too far. All right, let's take a look at the research. So, Invention 2 has been researched. This increases spell casting points. So, this went up to uh, another 10, as you can see here, up to 40 now. It just has to refill. So, next turn, that'll go up to 40. And that gives us more. Uh, more mana to, to cast during combat. And we're going to select a new spell here, or a new skill. These are spells and skills and abilities. Some passive, some are of use only. And they can... They show up randomly, I think. They're selected from a, from a table randomly. Um, based on your class and your race, of course. Alright. Hmm. There was one I wanted to show you guys, and I don't remember. Which one? Oh, produce flame tank. Yes. Enables the production. This is an empire upgrade. 
enables production of the flame tank in cities with a dreadnoughts foundry. I have at least one of those available. And this is a tank that shoots fire. Oh, my. yeah, that's what we want. So that's an empire upgrade. It's not a spell or a skill, obviously, but it does unlock um, a fiery cannon, which sounds fabulous. Now, where do we want to go with Echo? And this is the way the game goes. Every single turn seems like there's something new to play with or there's something that's just on the fringe of being built or your hero's going to get an upgrade and going to level up and uh, or a new spell is going to be researched or uh, there's going to be a war that you or a battle that you're very interested in seeing what the outcome is what the quest is going to be completed it's always something every single turn and that's why they call this one more turn syndrome when you play a game like this because you just keep playing and playing and playing oh just one more turn let me see what's going to be built uh, etc and I tell you it um, it's really hard to walk away once you get started okay um, we're not quite fully healed up yet how about this tower over here unless somebody I know owns it you should probably go check it out I'm ignoring some of these sites because I don't know if I can take them. Although, this is a Phantasm Warrior. I think I might be able to take him. Yeah, we can take this. It's Unexplored Vault of Knowledge. It might give us some knowledge. We'll wait till next turn because our these guys aren't fully healed. Shouldn't be much of a problem, but I don't like taking any chances. All right, we're going to hit end turn here. I might spend a little more time usually on these turns. Oh, a hero offers to join. But for the uh, sake of brevity for this video, I'm kind of going a little faster than I normally would. All right, somebody's moving because you can hear them. So one of the AI nations is doing something. Unfortunately, I can't see exactly where it's going down, but I hear something happening. A hero offers to join me. Check it out. Rialto the Shocking. Pretty fella. Uh, level 4 Sorcerer. Wow. 250. We got the cash. We're taking him. I didn't even look at his skills, but I need a Sorcerer. Ooh, he, he's kind of like a clown face guy, but serious. And he's got abs, so he can't be too wimpy. Um, even though he's just a Sorcerer. So, what do we have here? We've got some got 20 mana. Shock bolts are nice. I don't have anybody with any kind of shocking attack yet. Fast healing is a Mariner. Nice. Okay, great. We like him. So the nice thing about these heroes is that they do level up and they get new skills. They can also be equipped with um, magic treasure that you'll find in dungeons and so forth. So this guy comes well equipped with a lightning wand that has shock bolts. Very nice. And of course, so you can put stuff on him as well in these equipment slots. And they can bring troops around obviously, and learn new skills and cast spells, all that fun stuff. Now, in order to get heroes, let me see. I don't remember the exact conditions for heroes, but look at this tome. The Tome of Wonders. In, it, it's a digital manual. It's an in-game manual that is absolutely gorgeous and so full of good info. I love it. So heroes, your trusted companions. Check it out. And you've got all these hyperlinks here. Heroes are your most trusted companions and lead your armies. Isn't that nice? Okay. So, just one more uh, thing to love about this game, I guess. All right. Um, he's going to need some troops, so let's move him over here and see what we got. We have a dwarf crossbowman is always nice. In fact, let's make another one. While we're here, let's make another crossbowman. Oh, wait, how about a dwarf forge priest? Eight gold upkeep. They have fire bolts, melee strike, guardian flame, which has a heal ability. That seems nice. Let's make another dwarf. And now, my friends, I think what we're going to do is skip all of these bums and go over to. Whoops, hit H for hero. All right, so let's take a look at this dungeon, or rather, a vault of knowledge, unexplored. And it's being guarded by 
But they're willow, they're wisps, they're pretty easy to kill. And yeah, we should be able to do this. Let's go into manual combat. And this will be the last thing for this video. All right, no walls here, sadly. But if you guys want to see more of this, just you know, let me know. Put it in the comments. Um, I can do like a little mini series of Age of Wonders. I'm playing quite a bit of it. Oh, oh, these guys shoot. Who you be? Draconian Apprentice. All right. Well, that's my first target. Anybody that shoots. And Echo, who happens to be far, far away, is going to shoot these guys. But let's just make sure. Ooh, actually, before they do that, let's make sure they're not completely invincible. Static electricity. I don't see any. They have a high resistance, but they're not invincible to uh, this sort of attack. So, nope. Nope, nope, nope. They have lungs. Good. You like it when they have lungs. All right, let's just make short work of this. So, let's shoot uh, wisps. That sounded horrible. I'm not even going to back up, I think. Let's just shoot everybody. Shoot them! Nice. And what do we have here? Okay, these are crushers. So, they're all about the melee. Put them in front here. And what do we have here? Dwarf prospectors throw stones at things. Mm, let's throw some stones. <laughs> and uh, let's see. You, fella. Phaeron the Quick. Target will retaliate even if I... Oh, no, 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 no. I have a bow. Let's shoot him with the bow. Or some sort of... Oh, yeah. Did I just level up? Did I just level... Phaeron just leveled up? Yes, he did. Level four. Super, super duper. All right. I think we're done. Oh, no, 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 no. We have swarmers. Um, not out of range. We might as well take that unit down. I think we can do it. Yes, they do not like the blight. Okay. Now we're done. Let's let the independents go. Oh, he's healing. He healed up his... What are these things? All right, that is a... Oh, that's the Phantasm Warrior. Okay. I thought they had legs. Maybe thinking of something different. All right, so let's shoot. Well, I think we can take the Wisps down with our Draconians. Oh, they retaliated? Ow! I <laughs> shocked. <laughs> All right, just shoot it then. Oh no! What are you doing? Oh, I did it again, didn't I? No, let's beat it with our with our muskets. That's fine too. Now he can't shoot because his gun's on a cooldown. But we can. Skip. Oh, see. Okay, this I believe. Yeah, there we go. Incorporeal. Um. Let me try that. Is that going to work? Oh, it says right there, target cannot be affected by that. That's really nice that it tells you that before you use it. But that does make sense. They uh, are, they don't have lungs, so they, you can't suffocate something that doesn't have lungs. Makes perfect sense to me. And let's backstab him. Done. I think that's it. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. oh. There's one more guy here. Is that everybody? No. Uh, we'll just charge the apprentice and run him down. Bam. With the mace. And that, my friends, is that. Let's see what we got. Exploring the vault of knowledge, you discover 100 knowledge. Okay. Well, <laughs> I was hoping for, like, hey, you get to choose a skill, which has happened to me before. Oh, this is perfect that this happened in the video. So Farron the Quick has reached level 4. He's my high elf rogue. He's gained 5 upgrade points that we can spend on these uh, skills and abilities. And as you can see here, there's quite a few to choose from. There's just general passive attributes here like defense and resistance, range, strength, melee strength, hit points, etc. And then there are class-based skills like blind. So this attempts to blind target enemy unit. If it fails, the unit is hindered instead. 
So we could take that. That costs five. Or we can look at some of these other abilities here. And there's some passive things that affect the entire squad and not just the hero himself, which could be a huge boon. Infiltration squad. All units in the hero's army gain wall climbing. That's great. Because especially once we get into sieging cities that have walls, um, instead of having to knock the walls down, his squad will be able to climb up the walls, which is a heck of a lot easier and faster to get to the defenders. So, Cloak and Dagger, this will give our hero, or Pharon, the ability to cast spells. He does not have that ability right now. And I think that would be great, because having that extra versatility of spells is super important. So I'm going to go with Cloak and Dagger. So now let's see. Oops, my bad, folks. I misinterpreted that. Pharon apparently already had the ability to cast spells. As you can see here, he now has 25 spell points. Whereas before he had 15, and the Cloak and Dagger added an additional 10. Um, yeah, I thought this gave him the spellcasting ability, but he had already had it. But hey, more spells, more betterer. So not a total loss, but I might have chosen something else had I, had I known that ahead of time. Like Blind, that just sounds like a lot of fun. But anyway, alright, so I think that about does it, my friends. I am out of time. I would really like to show you that flame cannon, maybe some siege warfare, but unfortunately this video is going to be long enough as is. But if you want to see more, just let me know. And, um, you know, I can certainly record more. There's a lot more to see in the game, and I would love to share it with you. So, once again, this is Age of Wonders 3. It'll be out on uh, the 31st of this month, March 31st. I think it's $39 on Steam for the basic game, and there's a deluxe edition for $45 or something like that, which has a couple of perks. <clears throat> you might want to check it out. I don't know exactly what it has, but anyway. All right, got to go. Uh, we'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, have a nice night. Bye-bye.